Um, so what, what Align Energy is focused on um, is really helping large companies now that have these massive infrastructures of IT that mm -hmm. they've built over a long period of time, right? From back in the early 90s, their first data centers to where they are now, where they have this infrastructure that's a 30-year asset, right? They have to build large, large infrastructure, large deployment of energy, large deployment of materials. And what's essentially happening is a rapid change of IT, the rapid growth is creating a disconnection between that and misalignment. Mm -hmm. So what happens now is not only is it you know unsustainable from a PL perspective, data center costs too high, energy use too high, um, it's that they're too high per megawatt, but when people start to factor in the utilization of infrastructure, the costs are three X. So the compressibility in the infrastructure, the misuse of energy and infrastructure for large organizations has reached touch that there's almost desperation of, let me just go outsource or let me move to a cloud provider. Um, whereas if you were to actually rationalize and fix your own internal issues in data center deployment and compress, defrag, if you will, your existing data infrastructure, you can get 3x, 4x improvement in your P&L cost of data center infrastructure. Uh, we've seen this again and again working with large clients. And, and there's kind of a perfect coupling between that rationalization of cost for these large corporations and sustainability. Because what happens if you correctly align your business mission, your IT mission, what happens is you're delivering and using less resources, less steel, less copper, less materials. Um, and really the waste out there in data centers is, you know, we're chopping down trees to make a pencil. Um, and what we're seeing is the data center industry is really going through that same supply chain collapse that other industries have done, right? Uh, there's been large retailers kind of showed the world, <laughs> right? Uh, how, to, how to optimize uh, retail supply chains, the auto industry, if you looked at you know, kind of those disruptive change. And the same thing, quite frankly, is going to happen to corporations that don't rationalize their IT infrastructure because you can't have 25, 30% of your overhead being IT infrastructure um, and be 45X more expensive than your competitor. You just can't stay competitive. Um, so what we're, what we're seeing, the more we work um, with large corporations is the PNL impact, the positive in PNL impact that they can achieve by doing this is just is is is, is massive. I mean, we're talking you know one quarter, uh, you know uh, one quarter of where they are now. Um, for if they can get that balance right of rapid delivery as they need it, better utilization, and then taking their existing infrastructure um, and rationalizing. I mean, Um, the, the large financial institutions and the large network carriers. So these, both of these um, large insurance companies. So where, um, and this is this example. So a company that needs highly reliable IT infrastructure where it's a transactional issue. Um, so what we focus on are highly reliable infrastructure that is you know, dramatically more efficient, not only just from an energy efficiency standpoint, but a capital efficiency standpoint. So when you start to work at scale, you can implement things um, and really improve your cost basis. So one of the things that we're, you know, one that we're highly focused on is you take a large organization that has 30, 50 megawatts of IT infrastructure. They typically will have 100 megawatts if they're 50 of IT, of generators, parallel and gear, power switch gear of infrastructure. And essentially that investment was made only for the hottest day of the year if they were under full load. And so what we're doing with these corporations is allowing them by coming in with technologies where our peak PUE is one tenth that of traditional systems, uh, where we're actually able to mine that existing investment. Um, and so what happens now is they can create new capacity in where they already have their people, where they already have the network, where they already have their resources, 
that not only from just a capex, it's one third the cost of going out and outsourcing new capacity. Um, but what also happens is if you take into the account of your people, your network, your security, all of your controls, um, the costs really start to become uh, you know, significant to where they're one fifth, one sixth the cost of outsourcing. And that's what we're seeing is, is this trend in the marketplace with corporations that are trying to just manage for that short term cash are actually doing things that if they were to if they were to approach the problem differently, they could actually yield a much lower yearly cash outlay for IT infrastructure, but then not setting themselves up for this kind of move to an OPEX solely to an OPEX model where they end up overpaying for it. Um, so while we'll deliver things on an OPEX model, we're big believers in, in price transparency so that whether you bought it or leased it, uh, you're basically getting a good deal uh, as opposed to the industry right now is taking advantage of kind of um, the issue that corporations are in right now where they, they've overbuilt infrastructure in many cases, or they have infrastructure that's not adaptable to their needs, therefore they're so inefficient, therefore I'll, I'll do this other thing which is looks better. Um, our philosophy is we can you know, do a, a third better than what the co-location and you know, the wholesale models are, and we can do one sixth better than where, you, where traditional P&L corporations are from a, from a P&L impact. And this is not only important for the bottom line and making it more sustainable for an economic perspective, but there's a pure coupling into just lower material use. You know, there's nothing more sustainable than somebody who already has a bunch of generator infrastructure, electrical infrastructure, than to fully utilize it, right? It doesn't make sense to have that sitting idle and keep replacing it with stuff that you don't use. It makes much, much more sense to take full advantage of the existing investment that you have. And then once you've created efficient infrastructure and now your own internal infrastructure your cost basis is competitive in the marketplace when you go add new infrastructure to do it in an efficient way we focus my, my firm belief is the data center model that is, is is one of the true models out there where there is no there is no difference between a sustainable approach from an environmental and a cost effective because you're talking about deployment of materials and deployment of huge amounts of energy and water which is where your cost is uh, 50 to 75 percent of the data center model is opex and of that opex you know 80 percent is the energy cost so if you focus on lowering your costs and truly lowering your costs right not just moving around and shifting cost structures but truly getting it efficient and then looking at secondary you know capital deployment or the bit or the way in which i deploy it as a secondary issue but just first focus on the most efficient from a capital and opex perspective what you find then is that is a totally sustainable approach there's no there's no difference between the two and so the biggest thing that a sustainability officer can do is to work within the organization to create a common lens and a common way of looking at data center costs. And if you align, you know, uh, if you align the server side, server utilization, great example of, you know, it's a big issue with just a lot of deployment of server, server infrastructure that is underutilized. So virtualization is a big thing that corporations are trying to do to create more virtualized environment to consolidate. Those are all things that compact the usage case or the usage of data center infrastructure. And they're all, they're, they're, it is a sustainable thing to do. It's a, it's a good thing from a cost perspective. Where we're focused on is creating infrastructure that is virtualizable. In other words, we can deploy it um, much, much more rapidly provision it and we can also take existing infrastructure that you already have um, and lower the, lower the cost on, on P&L per server. Right? You gotta look at IT infrastructure on the cost per server or cost of, of the business mission per, per infrastructure.